I'm making this video very specially in celebration of the fact that the day that this comes up, so when it's scheduled to come up, I will be getting married. Um, the legal bit of my marriage anyway will be on the day you see this. And I will be wearing <clears throat> what was my signature scent for 16 years and is my absolute favourite perfume of all time, which is La Belle Sariki. Um, I mean, it, it sort of, it's a re this one I've got is the reformulation of the original La Belle Sariki, which was just called La Belle Sariki. This one is called Liber Liberté Acidule, which is Liberty Fizz. And it's just glorious. This perfume makes me very happy. It feels the most me perfume I ever found and it's been discontinued for a very long time. Now there's a lot of people who really like this perfume. I have actually made a little video before with a couple of my favourite perfumes that kind of remind me of it a bit. But I wanted to do a proper one that has my opinion of a lot of the perfumes that have literally been compared um, on Fragrantica. So I'm going to start by giving you the notes and talking a little bit about this original. So Liberty Fizz is a slightly floral, very fruity, aromatic, sherbet-y kind of perfume. It's, it's so tasty. It's easy to wear. There's no vanilla in it. <laughs> but the, one of the things about this that's so beautiful is it has a tomato leaf note. And it's a tomato leaf note done in a very beautiful way that's still hyper feminine. It's absolutely beautiful. I, I just love it. I cannot tell you how much I love this perfume. I'm making a whole video dedicated to it. So that should give you a bit of a hint. But so I don't have I don't have all of the perfumes that have been compared to this. Some of them I've smelt in store and they straight up just don't smell anything like uh, La Belle's. Some of them I've owned and I didn't get on with, so I've sold them, or there's a couple actually that I've just um, got rid of quite recently before I realized I was gonna <laughs> make this video, which is annoying, but anyway. So the notes of La Belle's Ariki Liberty Fizz are top notes of tomato leaf, blackcurrant, orange, basil, and mint. Middle notes are tomato flour, freesia, magnolia, wisteria. The base notes are tomato, raspberry and fig leaf. It's a little bit green, but not too green. It's a little bit fruity, a little bit sharp, a little bit sweet. It's a bit herbal. It's just, it's everything in the world that is perfect in a perfume. It's gorgeous and I love it very passionately. So... Before I turn this round, what I'm really hoping is that before this goes up in September, I will be learning how, how to put a little picture into my videos because I hope that I'll be able to do that. Now, one of the things that always gets voted for is Bella by Nina Riki. Now, when the Labelle's de Riki line was um, discontinued, the line that came out were the little apples, you know, and... I think everyone who loved La Belle Sariki and Liberty Fizz were absolutely hoping that Nina Riki would just repackage that perfume in one of those apple bottles at some point. And so every time one came out, people would be on Fragrantica saying, I'm going to go and smell this. It might be the same. It looks like it might be the same. And they never, ever were. They never were. Those perfumes are so girly. I find them super generic. They're very sweet. They're just... They're nowhere near the quality of this Labelle's range, in my humble opinion. Um, I understand why people like them because they are very mass pleasing, but they're not interesting the way that the Labelle's line were generally. There were there was one called Spicy Delight. There was one called Arm and Love. Um, they sort of they started getting generic when they tried to make the cherry one. That one was rubbish. But the the three original or the original with the two flankers were incredible perfumes. I've never smelled anything that smells like them since. So the one that everyone always says, oh, this is a bit like it, which I absolutely put my foot down and say, no, it's nothing like it, is Bella by Nina Riki. That's the little green apple. Um, the notes in that are rhubarb, green mandarin and lemon, middle notes, freesia and rose, base notes, vanilla and white musk. It's incredibly sweet. It's very vanilla-y. It does not in any way bear any resemblance to La Belle's. So that one, hopefully you'll have seen a picture of it. If you don't, that's because I haven't worked out how to put them in my video. So we'll see. <laughs> so we're going to move on now to this guy. So this is In Love Again by Yves Saint Laurent. And this was my signature scent after La Belle's 
I basically almost ran out of it. So as you can see, I saved a tiny bit of my labels and I literally saved it for the day I got married. Or, you know, if I wasn't going to get married, a very special occasion. And just so I could smell it as well. Because I've always, always kept this in a nice dark cupboard. It's always been kept cool and safe and it still smells just as fabulous as it did then. It's just a magical, magical perfume. So in love again... I smelled so many perfumes. I was trying to find something that I found comfortable to wear. It was very difficult. And eventually I found this one. So in love again, this is a reformulation of an old classic, which I think um, originally did have tomato leaf in it and was very, very strong compared to this. Um, this, unfortunately, is not very well. It doesn't last very well. It doesn't really smell like labels properly. But it has a vibe of it. There's something about it. I found it. I find it very comfortable to wear the same way that I did labels. And there's something herbal and fruity, tangy but sweet, light, summery. It, it's just it's got the same vibe. So the notes in this, the official notes. Top notes of blackcurrant and mandarin orange. Middle notes of grape, rose and peony. Base notes of blackberry and musk. So this has musk skin, but it has it shares the black currant. It shares that kind of that citrusy smell, that sharp fruit smell, and it's just beautiful. I mean, it doesn't list that this has tomato leaf in it anymore, but I think it probably does. I think the list of notes that are in this aren't necessarily the full set of notes. But In Love Again is a beautiful perfume. However, it is about £75 for an 80ml bottle and it really doesn't last very long, which is really upsetting. So I would say if you can afford it, it's gorgeous. If you like labels and money isn't an issue, try it. It's beautiful and I love it. So and let's turn around. So uh, I don't know if I said, but just in case I didn't, these are things that have been compared on for Grantica. So this little guy here was one of my more recent signature scents. And this is uh, Boom by Jean Arthas. And this is the Green Tea and Cherry Blossom Flanker. Now, this is another one of those where there are certain elements of it that do smell like labels, but it just generally has a vibe of labels. It doesn't actually smell like labels. It just, it has that same kind of spirit, if that makes any sense without me sounding utterly ridiculous. So the top notes of this are tea, lemon and pear. The middle notes are cherry blossom, blackcurrant and rose. The base notes are peach and musk. So the blackcurrant um, and the lemon are working quite hard to give you that kind of sherbety tanginess. The pear's making it sweet and the tea makes it a bit herbal and aromatic, which I think is what you get in labels from the tomato leaf note. Um, so I love this perfume. It's really easy to wear, but it's another one, unfortunately, that's very hard to find because I'm not sure if this has actually been discontinued. It probably has, which is a tragedy, but I love this perfume. I, it's in my rotation all the time. I think it's absolutely great. And, um, I really recommend it if you can find it because it's also quite cheap. Um, so the other thing to mention with this is that unfortunately I don't have it. I literally just sold it in a tea perfume bundle because, I had for a while, and I have spoken before, about Green Tea Pomegranate by Elizabeth Arden. Now, again, hopefully there's a picture if I've worked out how to do it. Um, that perfume is an interesting one, and I do think it has a very kind of LaBelle's vibe about it, in the same way that Boom Cherry Blossom and Green Tea does. Now, I find that Cherry Blossom, Green Tea Cherry Blossom from Boom and Green Tea Pomegranate are are slightly similar in a way um so that's why I didn't feel I need it anymore because also it does tend to go a bit shampooy on me um it was in my shampoo perfumes because of that and the thing is whenever I tried to wear green tea pomegranate by Elizabeth Arden I always just wished I'd put on boom so I thought it was time to declutter that one make a bit of space but that one that's a good alternative if you can't get boom green tea cherry blossom because it has that tart tangy sharpness with the herbal tea and it, it just it it has that a, a liberty fizz vibe to it it has that same fizzy effervescent herbally fruity vibe that labelle's original does so the notes in the um 
green tea pomegranate from Elizabeth Arden are top notes of pomegranate, passion fruit, tangelo and bergamot, middle notes, earl grey tea, violet leaves, white magnolia and divana, base notes of raspberry bloom, mate, musk and moss. So that one's a really good option because also you can get 100ml for a tenner, so that one's really good. So then we have a comparison. I got this quite recently because this was compared to Labelle's um, and... Mm, this one, I would say, it smells less like Labelle's and it smells more like Elizabeth Arden green tea pomegranate. It's got a very tart and sharp fruitiness to it that then dries down to be a bit more floral and musky. And again, it's in that same kind of wheelhouse where there's a vibe to it that has that kind of Labelle's vibe, but it doesn't actually smell like Liberty Fizz. So it's very nice. I like it. Whether I'm keeping it or not, I'm not sure because I'm not sure whether it's just like a version of many things I already have that I just don't like as much because it does get quite floral. But again, if you if you like a kind of tart fruit and a gentle floral and a bit of muskiness, then and, and you liked Liberty Fizz, then you might really like this one, but I do not think it actually smells like Liberty Fizz. So the notes of um, Jimmy, so this is Jimmy Chu floral. So the top notes are nectarine, tangerine and bergamot. The middle notes are magnolia, apricot blossom and sweet pea. Base notes are musk, ambroxan and woody notes. And I don't think it gets massively woody. Ambroxan, obviously, I sometimes struggle with that. That sometimes affects how I feel about a perfume. But, you know, I, th I think, again, it's not massively expensive. I think this was maybe you can get it for a 30 mil or 40 mil. Maybe this is um, for maybe between 20 and 25 pounds. So it's not too bad. This one, it's, it's sort of affordable. Now, now I'm moving into something that I think you start to actually get some of the smell of Labelle's. And this is Miller Harris um, found at dusk. So... This is a perfume that I've kept specifically just to show you guys because this is not one, unfortunately, that I can wear myself. And the reason for that is that it is absolutely a patchouli bomb, which is a bit of a shame because there are many things about this perfume that are great. And there are many things about this perfume that are quite reminiscent of La Belle Zuriki Liberty Fizz. So... It, the notes in this are the top notes are mint, bergamot, lime, basil, pink pepper and orange. Middle notes, black currant, black currant syrup, tomato leaf, bourbon, geranium, raspberry. Base notes are vanilla, ambergris, balsam fir, musk and patchouli. So you can see if this didn't have those base notes, so the patchouli and the fir and the vanilla, the ambergris and the musk, probably with the ambergris and the, and the musk, you'd be all right. But vanilla, patchouli and balsam fir are what makes this smell incredibly earthy. I'd almost go as far as saying muddy. It's, it has a mud smell to it. So it's a, it's a muddy patchouli, very, very muddy. But because it has the lime, the basil, the mint, the blackcurrant, the tomato leaf, the raspberry and the orange, there are a lot of elements of this perfume that actually do smell like Labelle's. However, because of that, in the very deep dry down, the vanilla really comes forward and it gets quite sweet in a way that I find quite uncomfortable. And right from the jump, I can smell the patchouli. The patchouli in this is exceptionally strong to my nose. But if this is the first video you've watched from, my, from me and you're watching it specifically because you like Labelle's Dariki Liberty Fizz, then I have to say... I don't like patchouli and I'm incredibly fussy about vanilla. So, so that's one of those situations where you just have to kind of take it with a pinch of salt and think about what you like. If you don't have a problem with either vanilla or with patchouli, you will be absolutely fine with this perfume, but it is very earthy, slightly muddy. It, it's, it's kind of, it's a very artisan-y smelling perfume, you know? Then we're going to talk about Again, hopefully I can put a little picture up, a perfume that I don't actually have, but I did own once. It's been discontinued, um, but you can still get it on eBay. I think you can get this for maybe 30, 40 pounds. And it's the first perfume that I smell that actually does smell like Labelle's 
with a couple of other elements kind of added in. So um, it's called Grain de Folie by Grez. So it's by Perfume Grez, who do the famous Capitaine and, you know, a, a few of Madame Grez and all that kind of thing. It comes in an incredibly odd bottle. <laughs> It came out in 1999. I think LaBelle's came out in 1996. I think it was, I think, Grande is very influenced, I would say, by LaBelle's. But they changed it up slightly um, and they put sweetness in it where there isn't any sweetness in LaBelle. So I'll read you the notes. The top notes are lime, green accord, rhubarb, kumquat and clementine. Middle notes are basil, gentle. Gentiana, peony, tuberose, jasmine, base notes on mimosa, moss, tonka bean, amber, musk and vanilla. Now I, I had to get this shipped from, I mean I, this was so long ago, I mean I must have tried this maybe in 2010 or something. I had to get it from Europe, you couldn't get it in the UK and I first sprayed it and I thought bingo, I found it, I found a replacement, hallelujah. And then it just turned very vanilla -y. The vanilla and tonka bean in it is very strong and it changed the profile to the point where I couldn't wear it. So that's one that I sold on. Um, but e yeah, even the even the colour of the bottle, it, it's, it's got, I mean, it's a very 90s style, right? That was the thing in the 90s. Things were very bright, very neon, very over the top. People would probably think they were ugly now. But I, I do think... I think that perfume was very much inspired by LaBelle's. Um, yeah, so again, if you can get a hold of that, if you like vanilla, that basically, that perfume smells like LaBelle's with vanilla. It's quite, it's quite close. So then we move on to another signature scent of mine. It was a signature scent for a while anyway. And that is from Brockard and... On for ground colour, this is called Listia Tomato. I think the translation is Sense of Nature, um, some kind of like aromatherapy collection from Brockard, which is a Russian perfume house. This one, I'm always a bit sad to talk about it because it's, you can't get anything from Russia at the moment, but I do know they still sell this. I follow Brockard on Instagram and I know that this is part of their permanent collection along with... Um, I think the black currant and mint, which is stunning. They've got a strawberry one that's stunning. They're not the longest lasting, but they're beautiful. And this particular Brockard perfume is called black currant and tomato leaf, or tomato leaf and black currant. It is beautiful, and you're really getting into the realm of something that smells just like LaBelle's. It's not an, it's not like a dupe, it's not a copy, but it very much has that same vibe. It's very focused on the black currant and the tomato leaf, and those are two very strong notes in LaBelle's. So the notes in uh, Brockard tomato leaf and black currant are uh, there's no there's no top middle and uh, base to this. So it's tomato leaf, black currant, thyme, mint, orange, jasmine, and musk. So as you can see, apart from the thyme and the musk, those are all notes that are in. Um, labels and this does in a way smell like a very simplified version of labels it has that liberty fizz tang it has that liberty fizz vibe it's got a tartness it's got a sharpness but it's also got a herbal quality a green quality and it has a gorgeous sweetness in there as well but it's not too sweet it's never too sharp but it's never too sweet and that's exactly the same as liberty fizz so i absolutely adore this perfume it will be hopefully in my collection forever i will i wear this now mainly in high summer because it's a very light perfume it works really well in summer so then we're going to talk very briefly about i just have this little spray in our days and um that is because this is a perfume that cost me a small fortune. So this in here is my little decant of Hedonis Cassis by Victoria Minya. Now, oh, I spent £150 on a bottle of this. <laughs> there is a... Um, a perfumery in London called Scent City and very helpfully they do little samples of very expensive niche perfumes from kind of I mean not underground designers but award-winning perfumers who don't really get a huge amount of attention so 
many years ago, this is before I found Brocard, I was desperately trying to find something that had that black curranty rhubarb -y, um green, you know, smell about it. And I found Scent City, I found Victoria Mania, uh, Minya, I should say, and I found Hednice Cassis. I bought a little sample and then I spent £150 on one of the most beautiful bottles I've ever had in my collection. Um, but it was then just, <laughs> because it was so expensive and it was probably, I mean, it was massively out of my price range. I was sort of scared to wear it. <laughs> so, I, so I ended up, I, at that time, I was pretty much wearing In Love Again during the day, which was also out of my price range. Um, and then sometimes I would wear Hedonist Cassis in the evening or for special occasions. But it was such a beautiful and expensive perfume. I just made that decision when I needed some money to sell it because you can't really get big bottles of that in the UK anymore. You can still buy this from Victoria Minya's official website. So you can still get it, but you can only get quite a big bottle. It's about £150 and you have to get it shipped over from Europe. However, this is very close to Labelle's, except it's not as sweet, it's sharper. And the floral in it is way more rose leaning. So it's a drier smell. So I do love this one. It's beautiful, but I think it's not as easy to wear because it's lacking a bit of sweetness. It's a very sharp black currant, but it's crisp and beautiful. It feels icy cold. It's got little crystals in the bottom of the bottle and it kind of matches exactly the, the little purple crystals. They match exactly the ice cold black currant scent that you get. And then you get a very dry, cool rose um, and lots of green notes. It's stunning. It really is stunning. But it was just too expensive for me to consider keeping in my collection. And as much as I loved it, I think, I mean, I think I got nearly a hundred pounds for, for that selling it. Um, so I just have this little guy to remind me of that beautiful smell. And then, you know, I just had to let it go. Maybe one day if I can get a, a, one of the travel sprays of it, I might get that. But um, yeah, I think it was just, it wasn't as easy to wear for me and therefore... I sort of decided to let it go. But if you can afford it, that perfume is gorgeous. This one is the one that I recommend if you want to smell Labelle's again. So Herbe by La Octane en Provence is, it's kind of medium expensive, you know, it's not like ridiculously expensive, but it's, it's more expensive than, you know, the Jimmy Choo and the Boom and the Brocard. But it's probably not as it may be the same as Miller Harris, um, maybe similar to Yves Saint Laurent. So in terms of general perfumes for other people who aren't like budget type people like me, it's not that expensive. But it's and, and also you can quite often get these on eBay. Um, I think I think some people find it a bit too green, but I think it is exceptionally good. Weird thing about Herbe, it has very few notes that are the same as Labelle's. However, somehow it smells almost identical to Labelle's. And I am, I promise you, I've smelt them together. I've done a comparison. I already have a video of the comparison to these two. Herbe is almost a dupe for Labelle's Liberty Fizz. I don't know how that's possible, but that's just how it is. So the top notes in this are bergamot, pink pepper and ambret musk mallow. Middle notes are nettle blossom, nettle, blackberry, rosehip and clary sage. Base notes are grass, musk, honey, cashmerian, wheat and coumarin, which I don't really know what coumarin is, but it looks like tonka bean. Um, and so this to me is just as, it's slightly more complex, I would say, than Labelle's. It's a bit thicker feeling and it's a bit sweeter. It's more syrupy, but it smells like a syrupy, sweeter Labelle's. It smells so much like it. It is the one I will be wearing when I, obviously I'm not gonna use my Labelle's all the time. It's just, it's stunning. It's a stunning perfume. It's a great replacement for Labelle's. It is absolutely, of all the perfumes I smell, and I have smelt nearly every single perfume that has ever been compared to Labelle's. I have been to the shops, I have bought them, I have sampled them. 
and I have been desperately for like 15 years trying to find something that smells exactly like Labelle's. This is the closest I have ever got. I think it is probably the closest I will ever get unless Nina Riki brings L Liberty Fizz back out and re-releases it. Which she absolutely should. I mean, she should. But it doesn't seem like they're going to. It's been a very long time. Unless they have a very big rebranding and do kind of what y YSL did, which is to bring, you know, some of their perfumes back. Same with Dior, you know, in different bottles, like the classics. Unless they do that, you're not going to be able to get Labelle's Liberty Fizz ever again. The best option you can go for is Herbe by La Octane. It is absolutely the spirit of Labelle's. It smells so much like it. It's just a little bit heavier. It lasts a little bit longer and it's a little bit sweeter. But apart from that, these two are almost twins. <laughs> That's what I'd say about Herbe and Liberty Fizz. They are incredibly similar. They're both beautiful perfumes. And it, I don't recommend that anyone buys like a used bottle of Labelle's Liberty Fizz because I know, because I've bought some before in the hope that they would have been stored properly and they'd be really good, but they've been peppery, they've gone off. I'm actually um, probably gonna sell my old bottle of the um, Labelle's Dariki deodorant and the juice in that has, has turned. Um, I'm just selling it for the bottle for collectors. Um, but the juice in it doesn't really smell right anymore. My bottle here, I've taken excellent care of it and it does still smell like the Belle Tariki. It's not gone peppery. The colour hasn't changed. It's still exceptionally good. And it's not one, it's one of the last releases because I basically bought about 25 bottles of this when it, when it was discontinued. I bought all of the new stock. So it's not one of the older bottles either. But you can't get these anymore. You won't be able to get them. It's incredibly unlikely. People will charge you huge amounts of money and you're probably not going to get what you want. So just buy La Octane, Herbe, and hopefully you will enjoy how much it reminds you of Liberty Fizz. And, you know, I'm saying that as a woman who's obsessed with Liberty Fizz and still has it here to compare it to. It is the Herbe is the closest thing I've ever found. It's a fabulous perfume. If you can get it on eBay or something, um, absolutely do because it's quite expensive otherwise. But yeah, I mean, I'm very happy with it. And yeah, but there we go. So I'm going to sign off now and I hope you enjoy knowing that I'm going to be wearing this little baby in my white dress while I say I do and we get our legal document to say that we're married and then um, I'll be back next week to tell you what I actually wore. Actually it won't be next week because we've got a couple of weeks in between. I'm doing this in advance. So at the end of September I will be back with a video to tell you exactly what I wore on the week of my proper wedding celebration because we're having a small family holiday in the UK in a beautiful location with a couple of friends and that's when we're doing our actual proper ceremony and I will be wearing a whole set of different perfumes there for the day for the evening and then like for the just general holiday we're on during that week so yeah um Thanks very much for watching everyone and I yeah it's really exciting making this video because I'm very passionate about uh, Labelle's. I'm very passionate about a lot of the perfumes that I've tried that smell like it and I'm really excited because I know the next time I wear this will be my um, wedding day. <laughs>